Hey guys, it's Fluffer with the United Operations. So, I wanted to do a video because I've been getting a lot of requests lately for a tutorial on Falcon BMS, and uh, I know Tenet, aka Krauss, did a lot of systems type stuff, but he never really touched on like uh, proper landing procedures. Not really proper landing procedures, but standard landing procedures, let's call it that. Uh, so, as you guys can see, here's a picture of a, of a beautiful F 16, looks like a Block 50 from the Wild Weasels out of Misawa uh, landing. So we'll talk about some stuff, uh, we'll get back to this guy in a second. Alright, so let's talk about active or what a runway is, or certain features of a runway. Let's go from top to bottom. So you have runway landing lights, which are a visual indicator, or a visual assisted indicator that kind of guide you in towards the active runway. Alright, so we have the active runway, which is runway 1-8. Uh, they just don't make these numbers up and put it on the runway. You know, it's basically a degree heading on where that is referencing. So 180 is pointing south, 180 on the compass. Uh, so as you can see, it's 180 uh, on the runway as well. Next, we're talking uh, for the touchdown zone, which is these bars right here. You guys have probably seen them about a thousand times on if you're flying on a commercial flight or just in general. All right. And then you have what are called VASIs, Visual Assisted Slope Indicator. These uh, basically tell you what uh, what glide slope that you're on, and they visually help you land the aircraft. Uh, so you're in a good, proper attitude to land the airplane. Uh, next, we have the thousand foot marker, aka captain bars. Uh, this is basically a thousand feet from the start of the runway or the threshold, which, if you want to imagine what a threshold is, is four or five identical bars behind the runway indicator. So the touchdown zone is approximately 500 feet from the start, uh, start or the end of the threshold and the thousand foot marker is from a thousand feet from the end of the threshold as well okay uh, so a couple things that we need to take a note here this is your desired touchdown area and let's say that this is hypothetically a ten thousand foot runway if we hit the nine or a thousand foot marker then i know i have nine thousand feet to stop the airplane okay generally known like let's say we're on a five thousand foot runway if i touch down uh... after the thousand foot marker and I'm too fast and I know I'm not going to be able to stop before 5,000 feet, like if I'm in a big airplane, like a 737 or a C5 or something like that, then um, that's going to be in my decision-making process to go around. Uh, some other things to note here, if you're doing like I instrument condition landings and you don't touch down by the 1,000 foot marker, that's generally a good, good note to go around if you're... Uh, obviously in instrument condition conditions. If you're on a longer runway, however, you might be able to salvage the landing. Um, so let's talk about what these are. So you have the VASI. The VASI is a visual slope indicator. This uh, kind of tells you, uh, kind of, no, it tells you what your attitude is to land. Okay, so if you guys have seen this in game numerous times, we'll go ahead and go to the red brush. Uh, four white on the VASI indicates which will be before, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, it'll be before the touchdown zone, but in between the threshold, okay? Between the threshold and the, and the touchdown zone. Uh, let's go to the, the paint bucket. So this is, uh, this indicates that we're above glide slope, which means that before we touch this, uh, if we're aiming for the end of the runway, that we're higher than we need to be. All right, if we go to uh, three white and one one red, uh, three white and one red, that indicates that we're uh, slightly high, but we're still uh, we're still on a good descent path. It's still kind of high, but we can still make it. If you see two uh, two white, two red, means that you're on perfect glide slope to intercept or to touch down between the threshold and the touchdown zone. Okay, three red means that you're low and at, the, at that present angle you'll uh, touch down slightly before the threshold and four red means that you're going to completely miss the runway uh, impact before the threshold even begins, possibly even on the runway lights. So ideally once you're about maybe a m half a mile away you want to maintain uh, I, I would say at least three white and once you're about a quarter of a mile away, uh, you're trying to maintain between two white and two red. Okay. Uh, anything below then, uh, you're going to want to add power because power indicates that you're going to maintain altitude, and you're going to want to uh, start a climb or at least kind of drive it forward until you intercept a better position on the glide slope. Okay. Uh, think of the runway lines as a guide for you, 
and this is kind of what you want optimally on your VASI. All right. Um, that's pretty much uh, the, uh, the demonstration on what an actual runway is. All right. So let's talk about some other stuff. So we always talk about you know being on final approach, and uh, I think everybody universally understands what final approach means. Uh, but there are certain things that are key said if you're doing pattern work or if you're flying in the pattern. Okay, so if you're a beam of the runway heading, so let's say we're landing runway 18 today, uh, let's say that we always enter on the downwind, no matter where you go, unless you're going on a straight final. Uh, and that is completely determined by whoever's controlling you. So we'll add this text here. This is common airport procedure. Pretty much everywhere you go, you always enter 45 degree angle to the downwind. Okay. So let's say that uh, let's say that we're coming in from the northwest, right? So we come in over the top, and then you basically break into a 45 degree. Uh, entry, or you can come in from, uh, in this case would be the east, and then enter in on this angle. But you always enter in on a 45 degree angle to the downwind, that way you're not messing anybody up. And also a common procedure is that you're always entering the downwind as somebody is on either their base or their final turn or their upwind turn, that way you're maintaining at least two, two uh, movement positions away from the other aircraft. Let's get rid of this guy and then proceed on. Okay, so let's say that we entered into the downwind and uh, this is basically uh, our position. Let's say we are roughly about here. And most small aircraft and single engine aircraft or generally any aircraft, uh, this is about when you're starting to configure the aircraft uh, for its base turn to its landing. So on the F-16 uh, your best forward speed in the pattern should be no greater than about 230 knots uh, if you're on the downwind, depending on who's in the pattern. So if you have a, a slower plane in front of you, you want to take that in consideration. If you're the only one in the pattern, pretty much have free reign on whatever you want to do as long as you're maintaining that. Okay, so you enter in on the downwind, and that's your call. So let's say, for example, today our call sign. Our call sign is Viper 31. So, as a call to the tower, let's say this is real real life, you would say Viper 31 downwind for runway 18, or Viper 31 uh, downwind for 18. By that point, the tower it's given the tower uh, basically your heads up call that you're about to turn left base. All right, so you have left base if you're turning left into runway 18, or right base if you're doing opposite pattern going into the right side. So if you turn right, it's right base. If you turn left, it's it's left base. Make sense? So you generally don't report your, uh, you as an advisory. You say, "Hey, I've entered the downwind." Yada yada yada. Your next call is going to be uh, your base turn for final. So let's say that we we start our base turn towards final, and you say Viper 31 left base for runway 18 or Viper 31 left base 18. That's going to uh, let the whoever's in the tower, whoever's controlling you, to give you a heads up on if you're clear to land or not. So by this point, you're com completely configured to land the plane. Let's say for the F-16, it's basically geared down, and if you're using visual conditions, then you're shooting for a three-degree three-degree glide slope inside the AOA indexer, which I'll show you guys in game in a little bit. All right, so we're we're left base to final, and once we return final, we're basically looking for that VASI, which would be in this general area, and we're looking for what uh, at half a mile, three or two white, two red. All right, you you ride that all the way down, and the um, the landing parameters for the F-16, depending on the weight, but average is about 150 to, or I'm sorry, 140 to 160 knots. That is about the average. So you're looking to go into 18. Uh, you touch down. Voila. All right. So let's say that you're you're doing touch and go operations, and you're on the upwind now. So let's say you're going around. Uh, this is what's called the upwind, and if you're departing into the pattern, that's what 
what that is, basically. Then you have what's called the crosswind. Uh, basically, the beam of the base is your crosswind, and then to the downwind. Hope that explains it, but that's pretty much it. Uh, so next, let's talk about what our landing uh, landing attitudes for the uh, for generally any aircraft. So you have five degree. Um, depending on how high you are, this is uh, what you want to intercept. Or I'm sorry, you don't want to intercept. Uh, mainly because you'll be pretty fast, and your descent rate will be higher. Uh, just imagine three degree being most optimal for most aircraft, and that's generally what's going to get you those two white, two red on the VASI, and one degree being very shallow, and that's what you're going to get your four red on. Okay, so just think of it, uh, four whites on the VASI for five degree, three degree you're generally going to be about two, uh, two white, two red, and for one degree you're going to be uh, full red all the way across the board, all the way across the rainbow. And generally, let's say that this is the threshold. That's about where you touch down. And as you can see, uh, generally, that's, that's a pretty good depiction on where you would touch down in relation to the runway. So let's say this is the threshold, and that's the 1,000-foot marker. That's, uh, that's a pretty good depiction on where you would be. Save. Untitled because I'm lazy. All right. So let's talk about uh, airports. Since we're going to be going to Kunsan, let's see if we can control find it. No, it's on page like 40 something. It's loading. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can pull it up. Alright, so on Combat 6, you can go to, uh, I'll drop this URL in the uh, in the video, but you can go to, let's say we're at Kunsan, the Kun, today. You can click on Kunsan and it'll give you the runway information. So here, let's go to the runway diagram. So as you can see, we're talking about runway 18 and 36, so uh, this is what we're looking at. So we, this would be our downwind, this would be our left base, this will be a final for runway 18. Uh, this is the ILS information for the tower, that's the tower frequency, and the transition level and the transition altitudes uh, of where you would be making your transition into the runway. All right. Uh, let's see. These are taxi diagrams, so you have... Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, and then, uh, yeah, anyways, let's, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. let's see, alright, so these are the departure procedures for Kunsan, so DME, basically being, uh, the, uh, the distance away from the base, in, in essence, is about two miles on each direction, and then you turn out 180 if you're departing to the south. All right. Here's the ILS information. So these are ILS procedures for uh, landing 18. We're going to be talking about visual procedures, so it's not necessarily uh, important. But let's say you're landing in instrument uh, con instrument conditions. This is about uh, this is what it looks like. So your DME at 20 miles. And voila, it's got your attack in information up here. We'll do attack in, or we'll do an ILS or IFR video later. But here's the VFR procedures. Okay, so we're talking about uh, left base and downwind and all that good stuff and the basic traffic pattern. So this is what it looks. If you're doing a visual or if you're doing a, a straight in, this is the, the arc or the line that you would take to intercept the runway. So let's use one eight as our uh, as our as our uh, demonstration runway, and this is about what it looks like. So if you're doing local pattern, uh, this is what your what your. So let's say this is your. We're landing one eight. So this is a right base. Your final, your downwind, your upwind, and your crosswind. Okay. 
and uh, let's say that this is a visual indicator that says alright I can go from this bridge to this arc and then intercept a right base instead of flying the entire downwind in the pattern. As you can see you enter in close to if you're coming into a local pattern um, from the west you would come in at a 45 degree entry angle and then make your uh, make your base and your right base and final turns there but other than that that's about uh, as realistically in informative as a uh, airport diagram gets tower frequencies are pretty important if you're flying you want to get in contact with the tower uh, but for all intents and purposes today we're not going to talk to the tower once we get in game uh, so that's about it uh, any questions you guys can go and drop them in the comments and I'll drop this link in the description as well as in the video um, but let's go and get in the game alright guys welcome back it's Wolfer again uh, so this is the end game map of what Kunsan looks like alright so it's a basic training scenario if you go to tactical engagement day final approach and you hit it it will pull up everything for you. You'll be in flight. Since we don't need to take off, we'll just demonstrate uh, pattern work today. So the first thing you want to go to your data cartridge, hit preset 15, set tower, save. That way you can talk to them, not have to memorize the frequency. Let's take a look at our loadout. So we have nothing. It's a clean jet. with uh, It's a two-seater, so not as much gas. And let's go and take off. Hi right, guys, welcome back. Uh, it's Fluffer again, and let's go ahead and talk about some things. Uh, to configure the jet, it's pretty simple. Let's go. We're actually on a straight end right now. Uh, let's keep our altitudes uh, between, uh, let's say, let's just for demonstration purposes, we'll do a thousand foot uh, today. And since we're landing uh, runway 1A, and the, normally it's a right hand, uh, right hand traffic pattern, we'll just enter in on an overhead break, and let's never exceed 350 knots. So let's say that we're transitioning over tower, and we're you know you always see the fighter guys do an overhead break over the uh, of the air base. Uh, you would just request an overhead break, and from that point they would uh, clear you to do it or not. Uh, generally speaking, you're going to enter your overhead break a thousand feet over the traffic pattern altitude that way you're co-located or co-deconflicted from them. So let's say that we're holding uh, 2,200 feet, which is roughly about right. But once I make my break, I'm going to let the gas or the throttle out and uh, we're going to enter a 45 degree entry into the runway for a downwind towards 1.8. So let's go and pause it here and let's see if we can uh, talk about some stuff. So as you guys can see uh, we're high so we have four, re four white as I indicated earlier for the VASI and the runway lights are right here. Here's the threshold and you never want to touch before then. And let's see if we can see the landing runway. So that's one of the runway 1.8 and we're going to enter an overhead break uh, for a left downwind. Normally you break over the end of the runway, but we'll just do it midfield. That way we can enter a 45 degree uh, downwind. So we're about midfield now. Let's go and start our brake. Speed brakes are out. And by the time I loop around, I'm going to make like a teardrop arc. We're going to be uh, shooting for about a thousand feet for the downwind entry. Actually. So we're roughly entering a late downwind or an extended downwind. It's entered now try to maintain a thousand feet and 200 knots we're going to extend out for an extended downwind since we're demoing it feels like I'm all over the place but I'm just trying to maintain altitude let's leave the speed brakes in we could actually make the turn now so let's go and turn left base so we'd call Viper 3-1 left base for one way or 1-8 Speed brakes are out. Let's configure for the runway. And the gear is out. Aiming for 165. And as long as we keep our jet in this little box, maintaining, 
we should be right on glide slope, which is what we're at right now. So as you guys can see, this little bar right here, that's an AOA indexer bar. If you keep this flight path marker in here, you should uh, maintain three degrees as well as this is your three degree mark. So as you see, we'll raise it up, keep everything in the box. And another thing to note here, here's your AOA indicator and we're green. So as long as we keep this attitude, which is in, like I said, anywhere from 145 knots to 160 knots and everything's in the box, we should touch down at optimal speeds. There's the threshold, end of the runway, power, power, power is out, flare. Voila. Alright, so we're going around, so let's reconfigure the jet. One, one, Kunsan Tower. Next time, wait your turn. And speed brakes are in, powerful burn, positive rate, gear up. Five degrees, full, keep it in mill power. And our climb out, now we're on the upwind. Never exceed 350 knots in the pattern. Let's turn a crosswind turn now, and we're at a thousand feet. Let's level off. And we're turning to the downwind. And we're high. That's fine. I'd rather be high than low. And we're flying the downwind right now. So you don't have to report this to the tower, but you would say Viper 3-1 and we're downwind. Uh, let's say it was uncontrolled uh, uncontrolled airfield, you would let everybody know where you're at. Let's go ahead and put a slight descent and correct back to a thousand feet. And we're a beam right now. So we're a beam of the thousand foot markers, which is where we're looking at. And we're trying to get down to a thousand feet which is where we're at. Alright, we can turn our left base now. So call here would be Kunsan Viper 3-1, left base 1-8. It would say Viper 3-1, Windsor, yada yada yada, cleared for the option. And you would report Viper 3-1 cleared for the option. Alright, so we're on final, let's go and bring the speed brakes out. Or, lower left base, so let's bring the speed brakes out and the gears down below 300 knots. Once again, we're aiming to put the plane in that three degree bar that box right there. And we kind of overextended, that's fine. Let's correct back to center line. 160, all right, we're about a quarter of a mile out. Now we have good, fast indications. We're still a little fast. We could bleed a little of this energy out. And as long as we keep it at the end of the runway, which is about this indicator here, see we're slow and low. Power's in. Awesome. Let's correct back. So that was a really low approach. That was that one degree approach that we we're talking about. It happens. Tower. All you can do. One, one. Song, tower. Next time, get clearance before landing. All you can do is. Um, go around or try it and not to try to salvage it in a real airplane but all right speed brakes are in full power gears up we're on the up one now perfect all right power's out keep it at 305 degree climb and we'll turn crosswind uh, we'll turn crosswind at three miles And we'll cheat 2.8, 2.9, that way we're in the crosswind at 3 miles. 1300 feet, we'll keep it level here. We'll crosswind, let's turn down, continue for the downwind since we're in a fast jet. Thirteen hundred is perfect, I think. We can hold this just fine.
turn the HMC units on. So I'm letting the plane fly itself right now. Bring the power out and bring the nose down. Let's try to correct down to a thousand feet. There we go. Perfect. All right. So let's do a. All right. So we can turn left base now. Actually, let's continue to hold it till we're about two miles out. Oh, yeah. Actually, let's extend out. Let's do an extended downwind for a extended final. So we'll we'll call out at three miles. All right, let's turn left base now. This is way outside the arc, but just for demonstration, we'll. We'll do that. So we're left base right now. Viper three one left base for one way for one eight, and they would say Viper three one wins. You know, one eight zero at one clear for the option. So let's go and maintain that. Speed brakes are out. Bring the gear down. And as long as we keep this at flight path marker inside that box. we should be in a good landing attitude. Keep the 3 degree marker on the VASI. Intercept, power in, power to hold altitude. Hundred and forty knots, so speed cross check is important. And this will be a full stop. Keep we're a little high. Let's keep the power in. So this is perfect landing attitude right now. Right, we're slow and low. Continue to press. Keep the flight path marker at the end of the runway. Alright, we're back on the glide slope. And we're taking over visually. Cowboy, 1-1, one, one, Kunsan Tower. Next time, wait your turn. Air brake to let it out. And that is pretty much it. Anyways, guys, that's uh, pretty much all I had for this video. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, please uh, leave a comment or shoot me a PM on the forums. And this is Fluffer signing out. See you.